Um, oh yeah. I don't know. There's a car coming. Like that. I don't want to get hit by it, but I wonder if I feel it. Tell you what. Anyway. There's just nothing here. See a little red flashing light? That's a racer up there somewhere. I'm a little lost for words for once. My parents are um, amazing. My f uh, father unfortunately passed away uh, in his mid 50s and the impact of that, uh, but having my mum still with us today, um, you know, she's in well into her mid 80s and uh, my parents, without a doubt, have had the, um, the, the most significant impact on my life. Um, I have a fantastic upbringing, fantastic parents and, and great family. I was a really mad, keen golfer and uh, went, went down that path for about four years in golf and that didn't work out and had to get a real job which uh, um, turned into you know, working for a, a, a larger company for about 20 odd years. Got into Ironman triathlon or triathlons in general. I suppose we started off with small races and then built up into, into the larger races into my sort of late, late 20s and early 30s. So 14 Ironmans, I was lucky enough one year and uh, completed four Ironman, so went and did Roth, I've uh, done Kona, and uh, a number, nearly 10 ports, about eight, I think about eight ports. We tend to uh, do all our training by blocks, so you know, anywhere from 12 to 16 weeks, and I just like the process. You know, it's, it's Ironman's normally four, five months of training, and it just leads up to a one day event really but it's it's the friends and the training that are big big key aspects a good friend of mine um, melissa robertson we met up about three or four years ago we were just talking about ultra running and um just long distance events and i always promised her that one day i'll i'll sort of get involved and i really wouldn't mind doing a, a couple of events and then COVID hit so that sort of spoilt the plans and we were going to go across to perth and do delirious west and sort of that threw a big spanner in the works. And I ended up entering um, Coast to Kosciuszko, which was a, um, an event been going over over 20 years, I think. Three, Starts at uh, Twofold Bay down at Eden and heads all the way up to Kosciuszko. And I think it was a bit of a bucket list event for me. I mean, there's a, a lot of history behind it and I'd never, um, I'm 52 and hadn't been to the top of uh, Kosciuszko as yet and I always saved it thinking that I was going to do this event and get to the top and I was just fortunate the weather was extremely good and uh, to get to the top of Kosciuszko even though it got pretty cold uh, with my son and my good friends Sean and, and Emily who all crewed for me we we're all able to make the, the slow trek uh, up to the top of Kosciuszko with me walking and um, yeah it was a lot of fun and then we got back down and yeah it was a great event. You. I think there's moments throughout events where you think you've hit a limit but you probably haven't hit that maximum limit and even though the last six to eight hours of that event, I mean, it took me 38 hours. I was hoping to do around 32 hours. Uh, even that six to eight hours, I know I watched my son's face looking at me and, I, and he knew I was definitely um, 
definitely in a lot of trouble but it's something about the body and the mind I think it you know it's a, it's really a mind game more than anything the, the thought process through an event like that um, you know you start off pretty nervous you've had two weeks to taper so you feel really really good and you start off the first 20 odd k's fairly chatty and uh, running with other other you know athletes and competitors and it all seems seems like fun we tend to be all smiles hey clarky clarky this one's for you brother beef jerky son works every time and uh, i think you sort of get into a stage after after that you might get up to around that one 120 mark 120 to 140 k mark and you start to realize that things things are getting a bit a bit real and you know you start to get fatigue and you get sore and you get lots of niggles and it's all about trying to work through and you know understand what they are and and, and trying to come up with things that sort of get you get you to keep moving but then I'm not sure what happens after that you know in this particular race you get to a place called Dalgetty and you know the next stop's Jindabyne but it's all through the night and it is absolutely isolated it's dark um, you know it was chilly but not not too, not too cold but it's it's a real mind mind game when you get when you go from Dalgetty to Jindabyne through the night it, it's tough it's tough What's on my mind? Well, I reckon being abducted um, in the middle of nowhere. Um, I am. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I reckon that was the darkest moment. Um, I really wanted to get the gin to bind. Um, and it was just a tough moment in my mind as to am I going to stop and if I stop am I actually going to get going again and I, cop I just said I'm going to get to the top of that hill and I got to the top of the hill at Jindabyne and it was my own personal challenge to just get to that top and then I said you can lay down which I did and I laid down for about I said, you know, six or seven minutes and I'll back up after about five or six and I had something to eat and drink and I actually felt really good. I think everybody's individual limits are different and what their, their, their mindset's all about. Um, mine's all about um, trying to understand at what point through that event your mind is going to tell you to stop. And I've always loved the battle with my own mind. And I know that races are all about competing with other people and you know they talk about, oh, I'm just doing it for myself. It's, it's not really that. Races are designed um, the way they are. They're a race, you're racing other athletes. But I do love the self mindset as to when are, when are you gonna make that decision to either stop running and walk or whether you're going to stop completely you know I've been pretty pretty lucky that I haven't got to that situation through an injury or anything like that but I do like to test the limit of, of your own your own mindset I've spent 30 years training I think I've spent probably eight years training other people and the biggest hurdle that I, I think people have is self-doubt or what is somebody else going to think or what's somebody else um, going to say and I, I think people actually hold themselves back and they just don't have enough self-confidence um, to actually get on a start line um, and and have a go I, I can only encourage people to have a go it's this isn't you don't have to be a top um, experienced athlete or or someone special you just have to be you and if you're prepared to have a go you'd be really surprised at what you might be able to actually achieve but it is about that self-confidence and self-belief to to actually put yourself in that position to maybe fail and uh, 
We've all been there, done that. But it's about uh, put yourself in the position, give yourself the chance to see what you can do. Thank you.